Let us talk about standing waves. Standing waves are interesting because in one sense they're not going anywhere, that's why they're called standing waves, but in another sense they're actually going both directions at the same time. So we're going to demonstrate them with our string and we're going to draw them and think about them a little bit. So let me first draw our setup here. We got two rods and you got the string tied to one end and string tied to the other rod. But I'm not going to draw the string yet because we're going to draw it in a special shape. Okay, so here's the knot and here's the knot. Now let's look at the real string. So you know this string would support a traveling wave. If I shake it, I can make a sinusoid go down the string. Right now it's going so fast you can't, you can't really see it because I have it kind of tight. Another thing about waves on a string is when they hit a hard interface like that rod, they bounce back inverted, okay? So I can kind of show you that here. If I make a, a good pulse on this string, you might be able to see that it comes back inverted. That's a little fast, so we'll try to slow it down or show you a clip of another one that we've done where you can see it better. But pulses invert when they hit a hard boundary. So let's put that all together and think about what's going to happen at the end of the string. So say we have a sinusoidal wave approaching this end of the string here. So I'm going to draw, first I'm going to draw kind of the dotted line for where the string would be when it's at rest. That'll help me draw my sinusoids, okay? And then I'm going to draw this um, a sinusoid like that. What if the string we're in a sinusoidal pattern, and that's like the peak going that way, okay? What would happen is it would reflect back, and when it reflects back, what shape is it going to have? Well, it's going to go reflect back inverted. So you might think it's on the other side, but it isn't, because if it kept going, it would go down, right? So to reflect back inverted is actually to go back along that same path. So the reflected wave would also be up in the sinusoid. Interesting, okay? Now what if, let's draw another one here. So you kind of have a point here where when it goes and comes back, this point stays right at zero, which it has to because it's tied there. What if we moved it forward a little bit? Then you might say, well, what if it looked like um, it peaks and then it starts to go down like that? You catch it on the way down. You'd say, well, then this isn't going to work. It's not a superposition of this way and this way, because here it's nice because it's tied, but it, here it can't stay at zero, right? It can't, we can't describe it like a, with a wave going forward, because that, that can't be zero. We know that it's tied here. Well, let's think. What if it kept going? It would keep going like that. That bounces back inverted. Uh, so that would come up like this. Those two would cancel out and give you zero right there. Interesting, and then it would kind of do something like that. So actually, when you have the waves coming in and bouncing back inverted, you can keep it zero right here. So you could actually have the string tied and think of it as waves going this way and waves bouncing back superposed. And this would be a place that we call a node where it's superposed, it's stuck down. This was what we would call an antinode, where it's stuck up, where you get the, the maximum amplitude here and you get a node here where it's tied. So that's all nice, but that has to happen at both ends, right? We also need a node at the other end if this thing is going to make this interesting pattern. So let's see if it comes like this and if it comes like that and you get one right there, you could have the same thing. You could have a wave going this way and you could have the reflected wave going this way, but remember the reflected wave would look like that. And even though you're describing it as a wave going past the interface and even though it's tied at the interface, the wave this way and the reflected wave this way always cancel at the interface. And that's why you can have the string tied there. And that's also why you end up with a node here. And you end up with a node here. Okay. And then you have another anti-node here. These are special places. And here's an anti-node where the amplitude is maximum and the nodes are where the amplitude is zero. And if you let this run in time, you just let the equations go, this thing comes down, this goes up, and this goes down. And you can also get a time when it looks like this. All right. So it is two traveling waves. 
one's negative or the other, but because of the way the wave superposed, because of the way superposition works, it works out mathematically such that it looks like the wave is just standing there going up and down. And some regions are up, some regions are down, some regions are zero. Let's look and just see if this really occurs at all. So what we have here is a function generator that's going to shake this string. And if it's shaking it the right way, it'll tend to do this. So let me turn it up here. I'll just go to, say, 7.9 hertz. And when I go to 7.9 hertz, it's get kind of a mess, things jiggling around. But if I go up to about 8.6, there you can see, now we're getting a nice pattern. And you can actually see there are regions that are doing what we said. Here at the end, it is clamped, and that's a node. And then it gets kind of big. That's an anti-node. And then look, right here is a region in space where it isn't moving. Right? That's a node. Then you come over here, and you have an anti-node. Okay? This really does happen. This is a standing wave. Now what's interesting, though, is it didn't happen at all frequencies. See, if I turn the frequency up a little bit, you lose a standing wave. Then it just kind of pulses around and acts funny. Only at certain frequencies do you get the standing wave. So let's think about why for a second. And the reason is you have to have a wave where it's zero here, and it has to go through its wavelengths, and it has to end up zero again. So only certain wavelengths do it. So it only works for uh, certain wavelengths. And we can kind of draw them, we classify them, so we count them, basically. So one of them, you would say it's like this. It's like half the wavelength is in there. That's n equals 1. And then another one would be like this. You get a full wave in there. This is n equals 2. And then another one I'll draw it down here would be, let's see, you get a full wavelength and then another half. Oops, sorry. That's n equals 3. So basically, you can count up how many of these you can make by just adding one more half a wave, and you keep hitting 0, 0, 0, and you keep putting them on the outside. So as you go to higher n, as you count these nodes, or you count these um, standing waves, you get shorter and shorter wavelengths. And you've got to be at those specific wavelengths. And we'll look at those next. 